Jones. Thank you for joining us on this exclusive, original, global Sunday transmission coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. It is Sunday, June 5th, 2016. Roger Stone, the consummate Trump insider, former head of his campaign, traveled to Austin, Texas to be live with us in studio on Friday. Yesterday, we taped three separate exclusive news breaking segments. We're going to premiere two of those today in the second half of this hour and the third installment tomorrow during the weekday broadcast from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. They'll all be posted, of course, so you can watch them at your convenience at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. There's a lot of other breaking news, obviously, we're going to be going over, but this first stone piece deals with this judge who Trump said, look, this guy is you know, for Mexico. He basically uh, you know, is an American, not because he's Mexican by descent, no, because he is a Mexican nationalist, La Reconquista, La Raza high-level operative. That's why I've called him a, the equivalent of a Hispanic Ku Klux Klan. When you run an organization that wants a race-based nation and that has openly said that the white race is evil, it doesn't matter if politically correct groups sell it and say it's cool. Just like they have George Soros and Facebook funding and supporting Black Lives Matter, that in my view is a very racist organization. It is what it is. And in my view, and from our research, it's the same as the Ku Klux Klan. It's just given more support uh, by the globalist media. There's a special report that John Bound filed that's extremely uh, powerful entitled La Raza, The Hidden Hand of Hate, that we're about to expose, that's also coming up this hour. Before we get to the piece uh, with... Uh, Roger Stone. Then the second part of the interview with Roger Stone, are there Democrats infiltrating the Trump campaign? Uh, is one of his son-in-laws an operative? Uh, what's going on with uh, Trump's uh, daughter hanging out with Chelsea Clinton? He's going to respond to all of that. Now that's two segments with Stone. We're going to cover a lot more in the meantime, but all of this ties together. Now an exclusive story up on DrudgeReport.com uh, we will also go over Secret Service Agent book Rock's Clinton campaign, posted uh, directly outside President Clinton's Oval Office. Former Secret Service officer Gary Byrne reveals what he observed as Hillary Clinton's character and the culture inside the White House while protecting the first family. It's coming out in three weeks, and it's a tell-all crisis of character. It has the Clinton crime machine absolutely shaking in their boots. We'll get to more of the details of this coming up and the different uh, chapters in the book. Now, this ties into other Secret Service agents that have gone public that worked in the White House. And later, photos were even released of Christmas trees with crack pipes and images of Mao Zedong. And when this first came out, People couldn't believe it till photos got released. And then other people confirmed that, yes, this was going on. They said it was a joke. Is that why a week ago they had a celebration of Mao Zedong and people that support Mao Zedong uh, and the call for re-education camps on the front page of Google on the birthday of one of these women? Uh, I mean, this, this is their real culture. But, of course, these are ultra-rich, above-the-law scum that then promote communism as a false revolution so that people never have a true revolt of economic activity and of cultural understanding and of rediscovering of liberty that would actually overthrow the New World Order kleptocratic crony system. So that's all coming up today, again, David Knight and more. But start your engines, strap yourselves in, because when we come back from break, I am plowing through the news, the anti-free speech news, the anti-Trump people running around attacking, the mainstream media endorsing it and pushing it, incredible persecution of Christians, and so much more. Yes, I intend to be a modern Paul Revere, but I intend to try to rally other Paul Revere's from a race, color, and creed around the world to realize that globalism is cancer, globalism is tyranny, globalism is death. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Sunday, June 5th, 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Coming up exclusive in studio with Roger Stone, David Knight, and more. But before I go any further, let me just briefly talk about another amazing human being uh, that just really showed us the heights of, of talent and of finesse and, and of strength uh, and of manliness. And, of course, that was 
Muhammad Ali, who has passed, obviously, yesterday, a titan uh, of the 20th century. Uh, going back, I'm looking at DrudgeReport.com. There's also some of these videos up on Infowars.com. Uh, the famous video of him dodging 23 punches in 10 seconds. Uh, of course, he was somewhat arrogant, but when you've got that type of skill and you're younger, that's to be expected, but he, but he humbled with age. But the, the lesson from this is, no matter how great you are, no matter how smart, how strong you are, no matter how beautiful you are, no matter how evil you are, no matter how healthy you are, whatever the case may be, the whole spectrum, death is the great equalizer. And all the corrupt, evil people in history that thought that they were invincible, well, they ended up going, of course, into history. And all the great, great, great good people that were out there as well, they lived on by the good things they did, by the art, by the music, by the literature, and by the example they were to others. And Muhammad Ali became just a better and better example uh, of an intellectual and a man as he got older. Uh, but, of course, he was the consummate example of uh, physicality, grace, and skill uh, as a younger man right up into his middle age, fighting way too long and having all that brain stem damage. So, um, boy voyage, of course, I uh, hope to you know join you there in the wild blue yonder someday. Uh, i got a sneaking suspicion that uh, God has a liking for Muhammad Ali because it is God that created us in the image of the Creator, and we are little creators who are able to build such amazing things. Humans are amazing. When the New World Order tells you you're ugly, you're stupid, you have no potential, that's so you believe that, that's so you buy into that, that's so that you don't actually thrive and stand up and uh, create your own destiny. Because the globalists don't want you to have your own destiny. That They want you to believe that you're nothing but a robot that they fully and absolutely control. So uh, we salute Muhammad Ali and all the other uh, greats, not just obviously of sports, but of innovation, of trailblazing, uh, and of doing the right thing. You know, personally, I would see somebody like Martin Luther King, who knew he was going to get killed, uh, as a greater person overall because of his moral character, his strength, uh, than somebody like Muhammad Ali. Uh, and I would say the same thing about someone like, say, George Washington, who also had great physical courage but also great intellectual courage. Uh, but it's, it's apples and oranges. Muhammad Ali is an amazing person. I just get frustrated with the mainstream media only making sports icons what we are supposed to think of as a man or as a woman, and that we can only be great within the confines of sport when the whole world is sport. The whole world is combat. The whole w world is basically competing systems. And if we all live in just fantasy land facsimiles of sports that do illustrate the greatness of humanity and, and, and the great heights we can go to, still at the same time, it only makes that venue the place in which we expect to be able to be great. And so it's a limiting factor and I think overall become very, very unhealthy as it did in the Aztec kingdoms, as it did in the Roman kingdoms, as it did in so many other kingdoms when it becomes gladiatorial. And that is exactly what it's become. But that doesn't lessen uh, the greatness of the greatest, Muhammad Ali. So without further ado, with a boxing metaphor, oh, let's get ready to rumble and look at some of the headlines up on Infowars.com prisonplanet.com and then I'm going to drill back through some of these also a ton of them are on drudgereport.com look at these headlines feds secretly releasing violent criminal aliens in mass we of course broke that two years ago they're completing the smuggling process TB exploding across the country more record levels in Minnesota another 141 not even testing them and there it is F secret federal programs Totally illegal, outside of law, nothing being done. And this is all part of the theme of the show. Our government allied with foreign governments, allied with foreign groups, bringing them in in an anti-American vitriol with a Supreme Court ruling that they can block you displaying the American flag if someone's hurt by it. I'm going to be covering that uh, here in just a moment. But here's the good news. Philippine um, president-elect encourages and urges citizens with guns to shoot and kill drug dealers. Anti-establishment movement is favorite as voters pick new mayor in Rome. Swiss reject uh, basic income for all. Far right and plot to hijack the British exit out of the euro. Boom, you see people all over are resisting. Uh, the nationalists were going to win in Austria by 10 points. They stole that election. This is a globalist attempted takeover, but people are resisting it and standing up. Uh, continuing now, uh, getting into the other news, this is uh, up on DrudgeReport.com, a Drudge exclusive. I've had it mirrored up on Infowars.com for posterity. Secret Service 
agent book rocks Clinton campaign. We've had other Secret Service agents speak out. We've had a fa famous FBI agent speak out. They saw the crack pipes, the weird communist paraphernalia on the Christmas trees. And then years later, they admitted they did it and said it was a joke. Just like we have all these other leftist groups promoting communism and authoritarianism and radical Islam. Anything that's antithetical to the Renaissance and the West, they're demonizing, they're attacking. Now this new book shot up to number one on Amazon. That means it'll probably be number one on the New York Times. Uh, the secret project is causing deep concern inside of Clinton's campaign, sources tell Drudge Report. Specific details of the agent's confessional are being held under tight embargo. What I saw in the 90s sickened me, Byrne explains. I want you to hear my story. We know it's her screaming at people, being evil, communist giant Chinese generals inside the White House. I mean, we all know what the Clintons did, but this is going to be another witness another fly on the wall to the things that went on uh, with these criminals that again are selling us out to foreign and multinational interest ganging up on america with the pope and the communist chinese leaders and the mexican president and everybody else under the sun the saudis to tell us who and when we can elect somebody el presidente now coming up at the next segment i'm going to air a very important report the John Bound file that dovetails into the exclusive Roger Stone interview that's coming up on this judge that keeps engaging in bizarre rulings uh, against Donald Trump in New York. This federal judge appointed by Obama is a Mexican supremacist, the evidence shows, and is a high-level member of La Raza, which means the race. So when Trump says, look, the guy is into his heritage, he's a Mexican, he means Mexican national. He means someone dedicated to Mexico as, as a culture, uh, as just like you might be a spy for Russia or China. This is open espionage with the globalists merging us with a bunch of people beating women over the heads with Mexican flags. And, and then the mayor of San Jose says it's basically a good thing. You know, we have all the footage of this. This is going on. This is happening. And it's so incredibly over the top. So that report is coming up uh, here in the next segment. But it ties together with these headlines. Criminal immigrants reoffended at higher rates than ICE has suggested and are being secretly released. That's the Boston Globe, okay? Boom, let's go to the next story. That's today. Here's another one. Only 6% trust media, but it should be less. Again, that's Investors Business Daily AP poll. I mentioned that every day in the last two months because it shows this is a group that has no one's confidence and they're just trying to con game everybody now, okay? No one's buying the lies. Uh, here's another report. Trump, Hillary Clinton should be in jail for what she did with her emails. He's saying it again, calling her out. This is the only thing that can counter these liars is getting very, very aggressive. Here it is. California, because I think Hillary is very weak. I think she's pathetic. I think she should be in jail for what she did with her emails. Okay? She should be in jail. Those videos are up on InfoWars.com. So that's why they're coming after Trump. And this is a test. Can the mainstream whore media suppress common sense and actually turn us into complete slaves, all balkanized based on race and religion, with the very people pushing the balkanization posing as the referees? Now, since I mentioned it, here it is. Remember this ruling a few months ago and another one last year? L.A. Times, ruling on U.S. flag raises questions about students' free speech rights all over the country, from Texas to California, saying you can't wear American flags, period. Not just on Cinco de Mayo now, because it makes the Mexicans mad because they see it like a bull sees a red cape as an absolute enemy. So we're taught to be open, give up our sovereignty, do all of this, but this is happening. And we come back, and I'm going to tie that in with all the rest of the censorship currently happening. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Stay with us. And we are back again. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Thank you for joining us. Uh, coming up in the next segment, we're going to be breaking down this whole fake controversy about Donald Trump being a racist pointing out that this judge that keeps ruling against him uh, is a Mexican supremacist slash nationalist. Well, we're going to look at the evidence uh, of that here in just a moment in a John Bound report. But first, going back to the attack on free speech in schools. Eight years ago, when this first started happening, I would cover local news stories where children and high school students, most of the time Hispanic, were being kicked out of school because they would wear an American flag on their shirt or an American flag on their hat, not just on Cinco de Mayo. 
and now they admit it. The Supreme Court has said, yeah, you can do that because it's basically seen as gang paraphernalia or whatever. So remember that. Now, separately, our reporters, Michael Zimmerman and Joe Biggs, have been out on the West Coast for a week documenting everywhere that San Jose, you name it, the police let mobs of illegals and others waving Mexican flags, beat women up, you name it, and now the police have confirmed what we witnessed and videotaped, and, and our listeners videotaped. You can see our listeners on videos on Infowars.com right now. That the police in a tweet have admitted they did it to not incite further violence. Let people be attacked so that it won't incite more violence. No, that encourages people to engage in violence, and they're trying to let people engage in violence to intimidate Trump supporters or people for the First Amendment to come out, period. This is one of the most dangerous precedents I've ever seen, and truly is like the brown shirts of Nazi Germany. See the videos at Infowars.com right now. And then next, New York Times uh, finds Trump threat to the First Amendment, yet downplays anti-Trump free speech uh, a denial in San Jose. As others, like the mayor, say, folks got what they deserved. So it's a mixed bag. Meanwhile, Don Salazar from InfoWars.com reports, school bars nine-year-old from wearing Make America Great Again hat. Go see the local newscast for yourself. You cannot make this stuff up. And then meanwhile, school calls sheriff on seven-year-old for sharing Bible verses, saying separation of church and state. You're allowed to talk about whatever you want, whether it's Pokemon or, or Godzilla or the Bible or whatever. It's the school can't directly force a religion, but this is how they're destroying free speech everywhere. And I have stacks of more articles. And, of course, this is happening in California. But see, if you can shut down Trump people, you can shut down everybody, folks. They're coming after free speech. They're coming after Internet freedom. They're coming after everything in our face. And it is totally and completely sickening. Everyone needs to go to Infowars.com, scroll halfway down the page, and click on the video, La Raza, the hidden hand of hate, supremacy group continues to infect American policies, and this judge that Trump's exposing is high level in this organization and wants illegals to be legalized. This is an act of sedition against our republic, allied with the globalist. Then after we play this report, we're going to come back with Roger Stone and drill into who this judge is to understand how this is part of a multinational, global, ganging up on America and our system to implode it, finally get our guns, and bring in the world government. Stay with us. Most people are aware that the Ku Klux Klan is a white power organization. Some are even aware of the fact that the KKK was created by the Democratic Party. Even fewer are aware of the Klan's foothold in Washington, D.C. Some people are aware of the new Black Panther Party. But are they aware of its true purpose? And most people don't bat an eye when they hear the respectful allowance of La Raza to enter the U.S. political landscape. Be it known by this presence that I, Kirk Watson, Mayor of the City of Austin, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 12th as Dia de la Raza, Day of the Race. But most people have no idea what La Raza really is or where it came from. Recently, an exhibit at the Bob Bullock Museum in Austin, Texas, glorified the explosive event that took place in the small Texas town of San Diego in 1915, when a Spanish document appeared calling for Chicanos, African Americans, Native Americans, and Japanese immigrants to start a race war at 2 a.m. on February the 20th, 1915. The document also called for the execution of all adult white males over the age of 16 and the recapturing of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, and Colorado from the United States government. In July of 1915, bands of Mexican revolutionaries entered the Rio Grande Valley. These guerrilla forces disrupted transportation and killed several Anglo-Americans. One of these sporadic raids led by Pancho Villa caused General John Pershing to enter northern Mexico in pursuit. The escalating tensions were finally brought to a standstill when Mexican and U.S. officials agreed to a peaceful settlement. Ancient history, right? Wrong. At the forefront of the revolutionary movement is the Raza. When you go to Venezuela... There's too many of us. We're ready. We're, we're breeding by the day. Back to Europe! This is America! Look your colors! You're white! You don't belong here! This used to be Mexico. You know what I mean? And the people that were here before, they're, you're just not going to get up and leave. Mexico! 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 Arriba Mexico! Yeah. 
You think we have kids because we like sex? No, we're having kids ready to start this war. Believe me. I got another one on the way. She'll be strapped up, ready for you. Come get it. Come get it. Come knock on my door and see what happens. We're ready. We're ready. In fact, a secondary plan of San Diego called for the establishment of a Republic of Texas made up of Texas, New Mexico, California, Arizona, Mississippi, and Oklahoma. San Antonio, Texas would be the place where the revolutionary leadership would be based. So when Donald Trump's university is being scrutinized by a member of the La Raza Lawyers of San Diego, it should now make sense why this is a clear indication that the body politic has been infiltrated. The Daily Caller reports, United States District Court Judge Gonzalo Curiel, the man presiding over the class action lawsuit against Trump University, is a member of the La Raza Lawyers of San Diego and oversaw the gift of a law school scholarship to an illegal alien. In his 2011 judicial questionnaire to become a federal judge, Curiel revealed his history with La Raza. Why has racism been allowed to fester and rear its ugly head unchecked? While being displaced on a presidential candidate forcing American citizens to face the danger growing exponentially on our border, while the spirit of racism is used more as a social weapon than treated as a social ill. Simple, because it has power over the masses, and the bought and paid for media plays it for all it's worth. Racism gets the common people nowhere, a nowhere the corporatic New World Order wants all of its subjects to dwell in. We need unity among black, white, brown, red, and yellow, everyday, ordinary people. So I'm throwing some questions out there. The original Black Panther Party formed in October of 1966, of which I was a member, believed in all power to the people. Black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. All right, all of us. Because we understood and we understand today that this struggle is about all of us. You know, resistance is not futile. It is essential to our life and our liberty. We have record immigration, illegal immigration in the history of the world. In the history of the world. We cannot assimilate this many people. And the government is teaching them to be balkanized, whether you're from Russia or China or Mexico, to control us. It's divide and conquer. And it finally destroys. John Bounds for InfoWars. Now, this is going to be a three-part interview. Today, we are going to look at this judge who has been ruling basically against Trump and doing unprecedented things in the Trump University case. And I'll be honest with you, I've kind of ignored Trump University to a certain extent. I've done some research. But after Trump came out and said, this guy is a Mexican, and by Mexican, his loyalty is to Mexico. And so I did some research and found out, wow, Trump needs to go further here. This guy is the head lawyer over a lawyer group based in California that for decades has been promoting basically race-based brainwashing. Now, I don't like the Ku Klux Klan. But Mecha and La Raza and organizations like this, as John Bounds report, that's up on Infowars.com, the hidden hand of hate breaks down. These guys basically operate just like the Klan. They say, for those inside our race, everything. For those outside the race, nothing. La Raza means the race. So I see Trump say this about this judge, and I think, what, you're just saying because he's Mexican uh, in his heritage that he ruled against you? Has Trump gone too far? And I go look it up. And the guy is worse than what Trump's saying. And that's the problem. Trump will just throw something out that's true, but then I guess with the sound bites, not get into the whole background of it. So we're going to talk about this judge a little bit right now. But I tell you, it's a fair headline to say that this judge is the equivalent of a Hispanic grand dragon. And John Bowne's report breaks down the Democrats, the history of the Klan. It's easy to organize people around race based systems. You know, the Klan says they're persecuted too. Well, Matt and La Raza say that as well. So I got to say, Donald Trump is completely right again. This ties into the whole Trump University. I know that the Clintons have their own much bigger scandal. Roger Stone is here to break this down. But this, this judge, Gonzalo Curiel, 
Uh, this guy is simply amazing, and now we know why he is doing things in these rulings that's unprecedented. I just hope Trump unloads on him with like this Daily Caller article, judge presiding over Trump University case is a member of La Raza. And again, that means the race. People say, well, that's okay because Hispanics can say we're a racial group, but whites, if you say we're in a racial group, it's bad. No, when people organize politically and say we're only for our group, classically liberal views are that's dangerous and bad, a la Adolf Hitler. Roger Stone, what do you have to say? Well, Alex, I think, first of all, that it's important to, to establish that the judge is not only a Mexican radical, he's also a Hillary Clinton contributor. Uh, but let's put this entire Clinton, uh, pardon me, this entire Trump University question uh, into context. Trump University was a real estate course, uh, and it was a very successful one for many people. Now, there were a very small percentage of students who were unhappy with the success of the course because they didn't go out and make a million dollars immediately. Uh, it, there's an overwhelming satisfaction rate. The number of dollars involved here are relatively small. This scandal pales in comparison to Laureate University. Laureate University is a multi-million dollar scam, essentially uh, a series of colleges uh, and, and schools where people were induced to load up on enormous personal debt uh, and, and then the college hired, uh, or laureate, hired Bill Clinton as their chancellor, paid him $16 million, which was illegally concealed for five years, never reported as required by law. And the uh, IFC, the International Finance Corporation, would give the schools $150 million. On top of that, Hillary Clinton's State Department would give laureate $55 million. It turns out the guy running Laureate, Becker, is a convicted felon, a scamster, who has also benefited and been a major donor to the Clinton Foundation. So Trump needs to counterpunch, Alex. He needs to be very blunt. Trump University? Nothing compared to the scandal at Laureate University. The real question is, why isn't Laureate University on the front page of every paper in America instead of Trump University. When I sit here and say that La Raza and Mecha are communistic, anti-white, racist organizations, I'm not exaggerating. Look it up. And I protested them. I protested the Klan. I find it distasteful. But the difference from the Klan is people know it's bad. It's being eradicated. Politically, people are turning away from it for decades. With the Mecha and La Raza, it's pushed by the Fortune 500. It's pushed by the media because they want it. Yeah, it's politically correct. It's almost chic. It's radical chic to be for these poor Mexican people. And, you know, there's this elitism with these communist groups and others that make me sick. But getting back to this, let's, you know, let's talk inside stuff with Trump and, and, and give me your real take on this. I know you will or you'll just say you won't answer. Is this a pattern with Trump on purpose? Because he, he always puts out a little info. It sounds incendiary, and every time it turns out to be true, where he says this guy is a radical, he's a Mexican, he isn't for America... Uh, because he's a Mexican, and I think, man, that's not true. A lot of people I know are some of the best Americans there are, super patriots. And then I go research, this guy is a flaming, grand dragon, radical Hispanic racist. And but, but, but So they're attacking him. Is Trump waiting, knowing the rest will come out, and he's proven right again? Am I wrong in saying Trump should do the data dump up front? Or did he just read an article, see the intel, say it but not go all the way? I mean, is this planned, or is this Trump only launching half of his bullets? I, I think it's instinctual, Alex. I think that he is uh, he is uh, understands that it is uh, that it is uh, uh, in the pressures of a campaign. You only can get so much data out. On the other hand, as the presumptive nominee, he can always get covered, and therefore, I think it's seriatim. Meaning, first you put out the red meat, he attacks the judge. Now he's going to develop that, and then he'll move to the counterpunch on Laureate. This issue is going to redound to his benefit. Because he's not a sitting duck. So that is what he's doing, though. This He's smart, man. This is a guy we need as a president. I mean, it's very Machiavellian, but in a good way. Well, he understands the the need to uh, to uh, uh, get your story out there in clips, in bites that people can digest. The people aren't interested in a long treatise on Laureate or Trump University. They want to get to the essence of this issue. So he puts it out. He knows the establishment thinks they can misrepresent it. He waits. He baits them. And then all the data comes out. Not only that, but if he <laughs> wants to be on CNN or Fox tomorrow, he simply has to make a phone call and he can get a 20-minute or 30-minute bite in which he can develop this 
in a way that is more effective than as a segment of a speech in front of 30,000 people. So, uh, look, he's smart like a fox. He understands the news cycle. He understands the need to stay on offense. Who else would have the nerve to say Hillary Clinton is a criminal? She has misrepresented the status of 30,000 emails and she needs to go to prison. And if I become president, folks, remember, there's a five year statute of limitation on these crimes. In essence, saying he will prosecute her and he will send her to jail. I'm sorry, I don't see Chris Christie or Marco Rubio. Yeah, no, no, no. He's delivering the, on everything he said he would do, do so far. He's not just taking the gloves off, he's put brass knuckles on because he said Hillary is punching him. He's going to punch back, as you said twice as hard, uh, you know, Stone's rules over there. Uh, we're going to go to break here in a moment, but coming up in part two, on part two during the Sunday broadcast, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, we are going to get into the really big issue, and I'm, I'm concerned about this too. Are libs infiltrating the campaign? We know about Trump's daughter, you know, hanging out with Chelsea. We know about the son-in-law with the Democrat connections, though I see him doing a lot of good work out there and saying a lot of great things. You've told me you're going to really give us the, absolutely the truth. And i got to say, Roger, I'm impressed knowing you a year. I've known you years, but really known you good for a year. Everything you've ever said has turned out to be dead on accurate. It's really amazing. So you're going to tell us the inside scoop. I am indeed. All right. Uh, StoneZone.com, InfoWars.com, uh, of course, is our site. We've only got about 30 seconds till we go to break. Uh, just getting back to this whole college deal. Y you go sign up for real estate school. It's the average price I've seen for good schools out there. It's what... You know, it's what you take away from it. Of course, there's going to be a few sour grapes. 98% approval rating in this compared to the Clintons getting $150 million and doing nothing with it and stealing it. And, and this is their MO. It's incredible, Roger. Not to mention the enormous debt that they've saddled individual working class people with. This is a, was a boiler room. It was a scam. In other words, you would have these, tele, these, uh, these uh, uh, telephone boiler rooms hocking people to sign up to get a, a, a degree and put themselves into deep debt. By the way, there were no academic requirements. One nearly... We've got to go to break. It's, 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 look, 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 look. Anti-Trump people wave Mexican flags, beat up women, and then on the news, they blame Trump. Just like Trump had a good course, they, they say he's bad, the Clintons are robbing everyone. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Infowars.com. Roger. Sunday broadcast. It, we have hey. Roger Stone, uh, the consummate I Trump insider, wingman, uh, joining us, former head of the campaign. In yesterday's installment of this three-part series, this is the second that you're watching right now and listening to on the radio across the country and the world, we got into the fact that this judge, this federal judge appointed by Obama, Gonzalo Curiel, is literally a Hispanic La Raza Grand Dragon. You know I hate the Klan. I hate ignorant gang-based, race-based groups. This guy heads up a whole fund with a lawyer's group that gets illegal alien scholarships in the United States. But I don't even have a problem with that. It's that La Raza and Mecha are so incredibly racist, are race-based, and have this whole cosmology that's funded by big mega banks to divide and conquer this country and to try to turn Hispanics into a bunch of racist, uh, you know, anti-free market globalists. I mean, this is really, really dangerous, but it's part of the larger program. We broke down how the fact that uh, Trump University, with 98% you know approval rating of the students, is 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 a totally fake scandal, uh, and just on every front, Trump has been proven right. But now we're going to something I'm really concerned about. Uh, look, I know Trump's his own man. He lives in New York. A lot of Democrats there. You know, one of his daughters is friends with Chelsea Fine. Uh, most people are liberal in New York. If you have friends, they're going to be liberal, like 90%. I'd say in Manhattan, or maybe 80%. But Roger, what's going on with the son-in-law? I see him doing really good things, really uh, fighting hard. Uh, and, I, and I guess there's some type of, you know, weird, you know, weird uh, leftist angle propaganda uh, that they're actually putting out that because Democrats in the family of the Trumps are working with Trump, that somehow he's a shill. But that doesn't make sense when you realize that it's a family issue correct me if I'm wrong, and the Democrats are panicking over Trump. Because if he was really a Republican Trojan horse, they'd be supporting him. Am I wrong? Am I right? You said you'd give us the real scoop. I know you will. I know it's you're not supposed to get into inside baseball with what you know about the family, but folks want to know. Please tell us. Sure. I've got to speak up for, uh, for uh, both Ivanka Trump and her husband, Jared Kushner. I, I think that Ivanka Trump is the greatest single asset the Trump campaign has. We already know 
that they're going to try to depict Donald Trump as a misogynist, as somehow anti-woman. There is no better nor more effective spokeswoman to refute that than Ivanka Trump. She knows the opportunity her father has given women within the Trump organization. She is, uh, she's gracious, she's articulate, she's attractive, she's chic, she's a mother, she runs a business, she's the perfect balance, and I think the single most effective- She's a uh, goddess. And the fact that she's cordial with Chelsea Clinton is immaterial, in in my opinion. Jared Kushner, who is does come from a prominent Democratic family uh, in New Jersey, has proved to be one of the most effective campaigners for, uh, I think, operatives for the Trump campaign. Uh, he is a for a guy who has not been in politics his entire life, but who's been on the periphery of it because of his family's involvement. He's skilled. He's effective. He has excellent judgment. Uh, he has both, like his wife and every other member of the Trump family, because they are troopers, Eric, Donald Jr., uh, Donald's nieces and nephews, their first allegiance is to Donald J. Trump and the Trump family. In some cases, they may have to sublimate their own personal politics, but there is nobody more effective, I think, within the Trump structure than Jared Kushner. Well, I mean, it's common sense. Blood is thicker than politics, but let's go further. Proof is in the results, the pudding, judge a tree by its fruits. He's been doing a great job. That's all I care about. Yeah, so this whole issue is a phony issue. I think it is being raised by some. Believe me. It's the Democrats I've seen pushing it. Yes, uh, there's no question. But but uh, look, Ivanka Trump uh, and her husband, Jared Kushner, are among the two most effective assets of the campaign. She's well, a great spokeswoman. And he's it turned out to be a very skilled operative. Doesn't the left also hate it because they want to say Trump's anti-Israel, anti-Jewish? I mean, th this just really pisses them off because it doesn't fit into their whole narrative. You know, you know, just like one of his sons married to an Asian lady, they just don't like it. Well, what they really hate is the fact that Donald has three Jewish, uh, you know, grandchildren. So who else could be a, a more forthright advocate for the for the people of Israel and the Jewish people? No, I think it drives the left crazy. But the attacks on Jared Kushner or, or on Ivanka are 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 meritless. They they are as dedicated to the election of Donald Trump than anyone in the country. Well, if you're married into a family and you're not supporting, you know, your father-in-law, who's like this huge phenomenon. And it could be George Washington part two. What the hell? You have to have your head examined. I mean, that's a no brainer that blood is thicker than politics. But I know for a fact that there are folks out there trying to plant negative stories with the Associated Press on Jared Kushner. I can tell you from my own information, there is no one more effective. There is no one more dedicated to the election of Donald Trump. Then his son-in-law, he is he has turned out to be a very skilled. Sure, they're attacking because uh, it's a strong point. Operative. It's a strong card. They're attacking. It's it's a, it's a major 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 spade. Uh, now, uh, major ace, uh, what is Trump's ace in the hole, though? Uh, in my opinion, his ace in the hole is, is the fact that he's fearless. That he's going to go after Hillary uh, on the Call her crook, say arrested on the big three issues. One. Her husband is a sexual predator in the Bill Cosby mold, uh, and Hillary has been the person who has bullied, intimidated, uh, and terrorized Bill's victims into silence. So she's not an advocate for women. She is an abuser of women. Number two, her horrific record as Secretary of State. All we've done in the Middle East is to lose ground. All we have done under the Clinton-Obama foreign policy is to screw our friends and insert our enemies into positions of power across the region. That's not a mistake. That's not an accident. That's their policy. And as a part of that, of course, is Benghazi and the fact that she lied repeatedly about the sure. deaths of four valiant Americans. Well, And lastly is the epic theft, the corruption of the largest money laundering scheme in U.S. criminal history. That would be the Clinton Foundation and the related Clinton Global Initiative. But taking way, money from dictators illegally to sell out our sovereignty or missile seekers to Chinese isn't important. A couple of people said Trump University didn't help him because they're lazy asses, in my view. Well, look, we both know that Donald Trump has been a proponent for the release of the 28 pages of the congressional inquiry into the 9-11 attack. Courage. Now, Hillary Clinton just took $25 million into the Clinton Foundation from the Saudis. Does anybody in their right mind thinks if she's elected president? 100 million from Gulf states. We will ever learn the truth about 9-11.
Wow. Now, we got three minutes here before we go to break. This is just amazing. Uh, in part three that we're going to air Monday, we're going to get to the biggest issue here, in, in, in my view, the VP scoop. Now, look, I know personally you have not told me who you think is on Donald's short list. I know you've, you've you said, well, I've been a little bit involved, obviously, you know, you know, you know, looking at different angles because there's a big war room going on, but Trump decides. Uh, but from my sources that are separate from you and just common sense and asking people around the office and seeing the zeitgeist and comments on my website and others, there's a name coming up over and over again. And when I brought this up, you kind of gasped and said, look, I'm not getting into this because this didn't come from me. But let's just be honest about the whole thing. You're, you're totally honest. That's why they call you the biggest dirty trickster in history and all this crap. Because you don't do dirty tricks, in my view. I mean, you just engage, you know. Uh, the, I, just a, know I know one when I see one, though, I'll tell you that. Well, this is a, this is a full contact sport. No question. So, so when they do stuff, you do it back. When it they punch, you punch back. So I don't know where I'm bad. going here. We haven't scripted this. I just don't know. You won't tell me. But then when I said, I can read body language. And I talked to some other folks. And they said, yeah. And then we saw what this certain senator has put out in the last week about how he would certainly consider it and be honored. So I just feel the zeitgeist. I've always had the zeitgeist. We're going to go to break and talk about this, but briefly, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, StoneZone.com. In 60 seconds, what is another tidbit you should want folks to know? Well, Alex, uh, President Richard Nixon once said to me when looking for a vice presidential running mate, he said this at the time that, that just prior to George H.W. Bush choosing Dan Quayle, he said to me, look, don't look for someone who can help you. Look for someone who will not hurt you. Now, that's ironic in view of, of his bad choices of both Sparrow Agnew and Henry Cabot Lodge, running mates who ended up, I think, either being of no value or not or hurting him. That said, uh, Trump is playing this very close to the vest. I don't know who he's going to choose for vice president. Corey Lewandowski doesn't know. You keep Paul, saying he does, though. Paul Manafort doesn't know. Uh, uh, you know what? Melania Trump doesn't know. The only person who knows is Donald Trump. And he will make this decision in his own sweet time. Now, he understands that's a giant news story. And that the place to say it, of course, will be at the convention to drive news coverage. I think he's got a personal short list. I think the short list includes people like Joni Ernst. Uh, the senator from uh, Iowa. Hold on, hold on. This is all going to be in part three that's going to air Monday. This is the Sunday transmission. Stay with us. Roger Stone and more. Infowars.com. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 5th, 2016. I'm David Knight, live here in Austin. I'm going to be your host for the rest of this hour. And, of course, you just heard Alex Jones talking to Roger Stone about the Trump University issues and the fact that the media is not paying any attention to the situation, the, uh, uh, exactly a parallel situation with Hillary Clinton. And we've seen this before. We saw this with the charitable donations coming after Donald Trump for the veterans donations. And he held a press conference and said, here are all the people that we have vetted. I paid to vet this. I gave 100% of the money. I didn't take anything for overhead. I even paid to vet the people. And yet what they do is they focus on him having a confrontation with one of the journalists who still wants to challenge him on that issue. we got a lot to talk about this hour, and I'm going to talk about, I'm, I've got a couple of articles and a couple of updates about this back and forth regarding this judge who is a member of La Raza. Of course, the Washington Post says, no, 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 that La Raza group has absolutely nothing to do with the other national La Raza group. And it's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to read to you when we come back, I'm going to read to you what Cesar Chavez said about La Raza. He didn't care for La Raza himself. And also we've got, even though we've got Newt Gingrich coming out and criticizing Donald Trump for bringing up the issue that uh, he believes that this judge is biased against him, former U.S. Attorney General uh, Alberto Gonzalez says, no, uh, he's got a legitimate concern here. And so we're going to talk about uh, what he has to say. We're going to talk about what uh, Cesar Chavez, the uh, union organizer, said. So we've got people who are both Republicans, people who have in the past have been uh, union, uh, union organizers talking about uh, La Raza. It's been around for a while. We're also going to talk about what's going on in Switzerland. You know, the Swiss just rejected Berninomics otherwise known as socialism. And of course, that's what Hillary Clinton is running on as well. They just rejected a, a plan. And part of that was to guarantee $31,000.
income to everybody in the country. Of course, that works out to about $16 an hour. The rationale for this was the idea that robots are going to be taking everybody's jobs. So how are we going to earn a living if the government doesn't provide us with money? We're going to talk about that's a lot happening in Switzerland. Of course, they had this bizarre demonic uh, opening ceremony for the deepest, longest tunnel in the world that just opened up for a Swiss railroad uh, there. And we're going to show you some clips of that if you're watching this broadcast. Truly bizarre. We're going to talk about the double standard that exists in not only free speech, but in terms of our government protecting us from force. Uh, of course, that is uh, abundantly clear, but there's some new articles that come out on that. We're going to talk about what's going on Brexit. The globalist elitists are starting to panic there. They're making incredibly ridiculous claims. And as a result, the Leave people have now taken the lead. And I think it's the first time I've seen that happen. We're going to talk as well about this. So I had a lot on my plate when I came in. And then I got this from our news producer, Nico. Shows me an article from Salon. It says, Donald Trump uses Alex Jones as an actual news source. We're going to tell you what story they came up with this. Uh, and we're going to show you with this particular article why nobody uses Salon as a news source. Because they just, it's just a hit and run piece. We're going to show you what Donald Trump was talking about. We're going to go over briefly where this has happened in the past. And then finally, we're going to talk about the outbreak that we're seeing of tuberculosis. You know, there are consequences to having an open border. There are economic consequences, there are health consequences, there are terrorism and crime consequences to having an open border where you don't vet anyone. We have multiple stories about what's going on. There's a story that's up on the Drudge Report about how, the, how Homeland Security is escorting people in who are other than Mexican. That's the, the special uh, nomenclature. They get special treatment. They get moved in because I guess if you're Mexican under the North American Union, you know, you just get, uh, you don't get quite treated quite as well as people who are outside uh, the North American Union. Uh, but we're going to talk about how tuberculosis is now being brought in by the open borders of Barack Obama and, of course, Hillary Clinton. Maybe we could call Hillary Clinton typhoid Hillary. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 5th, 2016. I'm David Knight, your host. We've got a lot of news to cover, some really bizarre stuff coming out of Switzerland. Of course, they've rejected Berninomics. I mentioned that uh, at the end of the last segment. We're going to talk about what they have in terms of citizenship requirements. You won't believe it, but there's also this really incredibly bizarre satanic ceremony that they had to open up a railroad tunnel that happened on June 1st. 2016. Now, you know, the uh, Satanists put a lot of stock in 666. Uh, we got the article that's up on the Drudge Report about how uh, Satanists in L.A. are going to stake out a big pentagram, and they're going to do it on June 6, 2016. 6616. Well, it kind of did the same thing in Switzerland as well. So we're going to get into some Swiss news, interestingly enough. Also some Brexit news, because that really closely parallels what's going on in this country in terms of nationalism versus globalism. I want to uh, put a bookend on what Alex and Roger Stone were talking about with the Hispanic judge who was presiding over this Trump University case. Uh, I mean, the very fact that this guy would dump all this information out, all this correspondence at the beginning of the trial for the media, that tells you a little bit about his bias, even if you didn't know that he was a member of La Raza. So the question is, is La Raza an Hispanic uh, Ku Klux Klan? I believe it is. And you know what? So did Cesar Chavez. He believed it was an Hispanic Ku Klux Klan. I'm going to read you some quotes about that. We've got Salon attacking uh, Alex Jones and Donald Trump again, you know, using Alex Jones to attack Donald Trump. We're going to uh, give you the breakdown on that. Before we get into the news, however, I want to let you know about our new product that we have in an introductory special, that is Alexa Pure Breeze. This is a uh, way to purify the air in your home because one of the things that we talked for a long time about how essential it is to purify your drinking water. You have to have water on a, on a continuing basis, right? You have to have water. You can't go as long without water as you can go without food. And you can't, of course, go as long without uh, uh, air as you can with water. So you want to make sure that you're Household air is clean. And, of course, in any house, most of our houses are locked up very tightly in order to save money for heating or cooling. 
That means that if we have any chemicals to get in our house, that stays there unless you do something to get it out. So you can pollute your own home or you can clean your own home. So we have a special right now, 25% off, an incredible uh, introductory sale for Alexa Pure Breeze. Now, this is uh, easy to clean and maintain. It has a silent mode at 16 decibels. It's quieter even than a whisper, which is rated at 30 decibels. It's perfect for rooms up to 800 square feet. It's a four-stage purification process. Gives you superior air quality. And the final byproduct is clean water, not ozone. So check that out at InfoWarsStore.com. That's the Alexa Pure Breeze, our new product with a 25% discount for the introductory sale. And before I go to this other news, as I said, let me put bookends on what Alex and Roger were talking about in terms of Trump saying that this uh, judge who has a Mexican heritage is biased against him. And it isn't because he simply has an Hispanic heritage. It's because of his connections with La Raza. And I want to read you what Cesar Chavez said about La Raza. He said, I hear more and more Mexicans talking about La Raza to build up their pride. Well, some people don't look at it as racism, but when you say La Raza, you are saying an anti-gringo thing, and it won't stop there. Today it's anti-gringo, tomorrow will be anti-negro. We had a stupid guy who just wanted to play politics in the union, and he began to whip up La Raza against the white volunteers. Even had some of the farm workers and the pickets and their organizers hung up on La Raza. So I took him on. These things have to be met head on. On discrimination, I don't even give the members the privilege of a, vo a vote, and I'm not ashamed of that. No, the whole business of discrimination can't exist here. So often these days, leaders are afraid, and even though they feel strongly against racism, they will not speak out against it. If the leadership is united, then it can say, all right, if you're going to do things that way, then you'll have to get rid of us. You have to speak out immediately. You have to speak out the first time. That's Cesar Chavez, the Hispanic union organizer talking about La Raza. It is the KKK for Hispanics. It is nothing but racism. It is Spanish for the race. So when you've got a lawyer, a judge, who is part of La Raza lawyers, okay, that says that he's got some issues. It says that he can't be unbiased in a case where you've got a presidential candidate that is saying we want to control immigration because La Raza doesn't want to control immigration. They want to control America, southwestern America, specifically on the grounds of race. Now, I want to read you something else. A friend of his, uh, Leroy Chatfield, uh, said that's one of the reasons that Chavez was so upset about La Raza. The same Mexicans that 10 years ago were talking about themselves as Spaniards are coming on real strong these days as Mexicans. Another friend quoted Chavez as saying, La Raza, why be racist? He said, our belief is to help everyone, not just one race. Humanity is our belief, said Hugo Chavez. And he noted, uh, said another friend, Stan Steiner, he observed that when Chavez told Chicanos this, he said their faces fell in disbelief. They thought that he was a nationalist and not a humanist. Do you understand? They thought he was a nationalist. La Raza is a nationalist movement. That's why when you go to these dreamer riots, you've got these young kids out there screaming about La Raza, screaming about Aslan, waving Mexican flags and burning American flags because it is a nationalist movement. It is not a humanist movement. It is not a civil rights movement. It is a form of nationalism. It is their nation against our nation, quite frankly. Now, when we look at this situation, of course, as we point out, this judge, uh, Curiel, is a member of La Raza Lawyers of San Diego. Does that make him biased? Well, Newt Gingrich thinks that Donald Trump missed the boat on this. He said on Sunday, he said, uh, this is the worst mistake Donald Trump has made, said Newt Gingrich. He said, I think it's inexcusable. Now, Trump said that his Mexican heritage was an absolute conflict. In other words, he's a La Raza activist who is defines himself by his Mexican heritage. And of course, that's going to make him biased against Donald Trump. Because the way the media has spun this, saying that he doesn't want anybody to come, he's not saying that he wants to shut out all people of a particular type. He said, we need to get control of our borders. We need to know who is coming in. And I think it's interesting to see Newt Gingrich here, because we've had a lot of talk as, you know, it was Gingrich uh, 
saying nice things about Donald Trump. Gingrich meeting with Donald Trump is uh, he's going to take control of Donald Trump, you know, because I think Gingrich is a stalking horse for the globalists. I really do. This guy has always been part of the GOP establishment that wants to push globalism in the name of free trade. So I find it interesting that Gingrich is now coming out and pushing back against uh, Trump. Is it because he feels that he's not uh, getting what he wants from Donald Trump? Is he not finding Donald Trump as malleable as a globalist would like him to be? Maybe. Hopefully so. He goes on, he slammed Trump for his comments, Gingrich did, noting that the judge was born in Indiana. Well, you know what? That doesn't mean that he doesn't have biases, that he isn't prejudiced. You have to look at what he does, the organizations that he's in, not simply where he was born. Newt, okay, he says, when you come to America, listen to what Newt Gingrich said, when you come to America, you get to become an American. <laughs> okay, tell me he's not for unrestricted open borders, okay? That's a quote from Newt Gingrich. When you come, he is an American, period. When you come to America, you get to become an American. So we got an anchor judge. His parents came here. I don't know if they came here legally or in illegally. They were from Mexico. He was born in America, so I guess he's an anchor judge. And we need to just shut up. He can't possibly be biased. Well, former Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez says that Donald Trump is right to challenge the fairness of a judge. Here's a guy who is Hispanic, and he says this. His former U.S. Attorney General, Attorney General of the United States, said, as someone whose own ancestors came to the U.S. from Mexico, I know ethnicity alone cannot pose a conflict of interest. But there may be other factors to consider in determining whether Trump's concerns about getting an impartial trial are reasonable. Gonzalez said Curiel is a member of La Raza Lawyers of San Diego. He says it's a national group that vociferously opposes Trump. But, of course, the Washington Post said... No, no, they're unaffiliated. So I guess that means that we just have to go with whatever the Washington Post says. Forget what uh, Alberto Gonzalez says. Forget what Cesar Chavez said about La Raza. That's not a problem. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 5th, 2016. I'm David Knight, your host. I want to talk about Salon attacking Donald Trump by attaching him to Alex Jones and InfoWars. This is a headline here. Donald Trump uses Alex Jones as an actual news source. I'm going to break this down for you. I'm going to explain to you why nobody uses Salon as an actual news source, okay? And this is a, a common technique. We, we saw this just a couple of months ago. Remember in the debate where Donald Trump came out and said, you know what, I'd like to see those 28 pages declassified. At the time that happened in the debate, the very next day, National Review came out and said, Donald Trump has gone full Alex Jones caller. That was the way they began their article. Donald Trump sounds like an Alex Jones caller. It's a crazy conspiracy that there's somehow 28 pages missing out of the 9-11 report that have been totally redacted and they won't let anybody see it. Well, it just so happens as uh, people start to look at this, they realize that, yes, that is true. And we have people, Democrats and Republicans, who on the 9-11 commission said we want that information out there. Saudi Arabia is mentioned repeatedly in here, and yet uh, we're not allowed to give this information to the public. And we've been talking about this for a very long time. They were right. It is something that Alex Jones carried the ball on. Where are these missing 28 pages? And look, I understand. Those of you who have been looking at the 9-11 report, you understand that this is a bunch of nonsense. Okay, But let's start unraveling it. Let's get people to understand how they have covered this up. And we've already seen the narrative begin to unravel as people said, hey, we want to see that. If the Saudis were genuinely involved in this, as your report says, and we ought to be able to do something about it. There ought to be some punishment, financial or otherwise, for the people involved in this. Why are we giving the Saudis a free pass on this? So that came out. But that was something that they attacked Donald Trump, saying he's an Alex Jones caller for even bringing this subject up. Now we've legitimized it. We've had 60 Minutes finally do a report on it after these senators and congressmen have been talking about this for 15 years. After we've been talking about this for 15 years, then finally we've got 60 Minutes talking about it. We've got Congress passing a, a bill, which, and of course, they, they've uh, gutted that. That's also a head fake. Nevertheless, it has brought this up. It's got people looking at it. And they tried to attack Donald Trump by attaching him to us. Then, of course, remember there was the uh, situation with all the massive ammunition purchases of Homeland Security and others. 
They said we were crazy conspiracy theorists, even though Paul Joseph Watson, who broke that story, showed the purchase orders that were on the web. That's what started the, the inquiry into this. What are they doing? Why are they buying so much ammunition? Why are they buying that kind of ammunition? It's not simply for target practice. As we pointed out, it was a quantity of ammunition that was several years uh, worth of the Iraq war at its highest level. It was a massive quantity of ammunition. So they come back and they would take one of the smaller purchases by one organization and say, look, this is nothing. This is just for target practice. And yet for target practice, they would buy hollow point ammunition, anti-personnel ammunition, ammunition that is banned by Geneva Convention from being used in a war. So we said, what is this? Why is the government arming against the citizens? Or is it simply trying to mess with the ammunition market? Because the military makes its own ammunition. But Homeland Security and these other federal agencies that are armed to the teeth like a domestic army, they don't make their own ammunition. They buy it on the open market. And yes, it did play havoc with the ammunition market. Was it a trial run? We still don't have any explanation for why they did that. And they started covering up their purchases after we exposed that. But of course, you had National Review, <laughs> uh, just like Salon and other news organizations, quote unquote, come out and say, hey, this is... Uh, this is crazy. This is uh, an Alex Jones conspiracy. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not the missing 28 pages, not the ammunition purchases, and not this story either. They say this is a crazy story that Trump peddled about how there's no California drought. No, that's not what he's saying, and that's not what we said either. And look at that picture if you're looking at the broadcast. They find the two worst pictures they can find, especially of Alex, uh, to make him look as bad as they possibly can. That kind of cartoon uh portrait there lets you know what this story is about. They say it's a crazy story that Trump peddled about how there's no California drought. You can trace it to an InfoWars conspiracy. Now, we look at what was actually said by Donald Trump. When he was in California, he said, I would have changed the water. You have a water problem. It's so insane. It's so ridiculous where they're taking the water and shoving it out to sea. And there's loud cheers, they say. Then he continued, it's not the drought. They have plenty of water. No, they shove it out to sea now. Why? Because they're trying to protect a certain kind of three-inch fish. And they go, oh, well, that came from this, that crackpot notion of saving three-inch fish. That came from InfoWars. But then they say this. The theory that California's water shortage is all the fault of the EPA is, like most conspiracy theories, grounded in an actual fact. Yeah, it is an actual fact, folks. It is an actual fact that the EPA is having California, even during the periods of the worst drought, dump massive amounts of fresh water into the sea for a three-inch fish. That's a fact, folks. Now, you can draw whatever conclusions you want, but that is a fact. And even Salon has to admit it. They say, well, it's 800,000 acre feet of water that get flushed in the San Francisco Bay to maintain its marine ecosystem, but that's not really important in the big scheme of things. Uh, well, let's go back to the article, because they did finally, they didn't quote from the article, they misrepresented the article, but they did link to their article, their source. And this is something from about a year ago, April 20th, 2015, environmentalists caused California drought to protect this fish. And we show a picture there on that article of the little three inch fish. Says, we reported here about the severe drought in California, the worst in decades. It's believed to be partially man made because of California's extreme environmental regulations that are literally flushing fresh water out to sea. Now, we're not saying that the drought was caused, and that's not what Donald Trump is saying either. He's saying it's stupid what the EPA is doing, it is destructive of the economy. Their regulations are destructive of the economy. And they're pointing this out. So, what we did was we quoted and commented on a CNS news service story, and we gave the references to it. That's what we do here, because we report on things, different things than other news outlets will report on, and we report on them from a different angle. And so we document what our take is on it. We say, we believe this about this particular story, and here's why. So we quoted a CNS news article, and they were quoting a Republican assemblywoman in California, Shannon Grove, who they said for months has been trying to get word out about how the EPA regulations apparently are literally draining water into the sea, all for the sake of a three-inch fish. Now, why wouldn't Donald Trump say something about the insanity of those kind of EPA regulations? you got people all over California 
being penalized for washing their cars or for watering their lawns, and yet they are dumping per the orders of the EPA, bureaucracy, telling them to put out 800,000 acre feet of water, just dump it into the bay? Because, you know, it's three-inch fish, and it's not a problem. But, of course, Salon says, gee, that's just crazy. That's a conspiracy theory. There's no conspiracy about it, folks. It's out in the open. They're not doing this secretly. The EPA's regulations are public. What they're doing in San Francisco is public. The destruction of our economy, that may be a conspiracy if you don't understand what's going on, but it is public, folks, and it is a fact. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to tell you what happened in Switzerland. You won't believe this. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Sunday, June 5th, 2016. Today, there was a referendum in Switzerland. Headline via Drudge, Swiss reject free income plan after a worker versus robot debate. There's a lot to this story. We're going to unpack this for you. We're going to show you something really bizarre that happened in Switzerland uh, this weekend as well. Before we do, real quickly, the products that we sell at InfoWars are what fund our organization here. We don't run a lot of other sponsors to uh, fund this organization. We sell products that we believe in, products that are going to help you with your health, with your family's health. And of course, one of the things that you need to be concerned about as you try to make your house more energy efficient, as you try to uh, get it airtight in many cases for air conditioning or for heating, you can trap the air in there, it can get very stale. You need to be aware of this. We've talked about this in the past. Dr. Group has uh, talked about the dangers of domestic pollution within your home, within your office. We have something now that can help you with that at an excellent price. A, Introductory price is 25% off its already low price. Alexa Pure Breeze. It's an energy efficient HEPA filter with ion cluster air purification. This is very energy efficient. It cycles 120 square feet every 12 minutes. Does an air change per hour. Uh, exceeds allergy and asthma foundation recommendations. It's a very small design. It's only about the size of a large briefcase. So you get one purification unit with an ion cluster technology, one pre-filter, one true HEPA filter, and a carbon activated filter. That's all for $189.99. That's over 25% off the retail price. Take a look at InfoWarsStore.com. Check that. Check the other products that we have for your health, for your preparedness, and also my favorite supplement. I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't uh, mentioned this at InfoWarsLife.com is Brain Force. Brain Force is absolutely my favorite supplement that I take. You know, most of the supplements that I take, I do them because I do the research, I read the reviews on our site, I see what people have to say, I see what doctors and health experts say in terms of vitamins and supplements that I believe that I need. But when it comes to something like Brain Force, unlike many of these supplements, I don't feel something if I take a multivitamin, right? I just look at it and I take it based on what's in that multivitamin with the Brain Force. It really does help to focus me. As I said before, if I was going to name the product, I would have called it Brain Focus. My favorite supplement it is now in stock. Get it while supplies last at InfoWarsLife.com. Thank you for supporting us. And look at the other products that we have uh, on site. Right now, as I point out, our biggest sale is the 25% off the new product we have, the uh, large air filter supply there, Alexa Pure Filter. Okay, today, Drudge had up a story about what happened in Switzerland. They have basically rejected Bernie-nomics, or you could call it free lunch socialism, or you could call it Hillary's socialism. You know, Hillary says that she's on with all the free lunch stuff that Bernie Sanders wants to do, but she kind of gives a wink and a nod to Wall Street because they know, nah, she's really not. She's going to be our crony capitalist uh, there, but she would enact a lot of that stuff. And we're going to talk a little bit here in just a moment about the true cost of free college tuition and open borders when you start to combine just those two factors. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but take a look at what Switzerland did. They were presented with the idea they're going to provide as a guarantee anybody that is 18 years or older would get a guaranteed income of $2,500 per month. Now, how, what does that work out to? That's about $31,000 a year, U.S. Or if you want to break it down to an hourly rate, wage, okay, of course, they wouldn't be working, okay, necessarily, regardless of how much they work. But if you assume that they were going to have a 40-hour work week, assuming they were working, uh, they would get $16 an hour. So that's even better than the Bernie-nomics, where they want to give people a $15 an hour minimum wage. So this is a pretty generous stipend that they wanted to give everybody. How did they justify this, the people who put this on the ballot? And, of course, Switzerland has a pretty 
open referendum system, so it's pretty easy for people to bring things up for a vote. It was soundly rejected. It was uh, rejected by 75, 80% of the people uh, there. But, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it was 85%. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, I'm not sure exactly. They don't have the total here. He said he reckoned that he would get 15%. It uh, looks like it's now going to be 20% or maybe even 25%. So the article, this happened today, so I don't have the exact uh, amount, but basically it was soundly rejected, okay? They rejected EU membership by about 75%. Switzerland is not in the European Union. You understand that? They didn't throw away the Swiss franc for the EU either. They're not fools. And so they didn't buy this free lunch socialism. But why was it being sold to them? That's what I think is interesting. It was being sold to them because they said, well, you know, the robots are going to take our jobs. We're not going to have any jobs. What are we going to do? So they're selling this to them already as this kind of reservation. That's what we did to the Indians in this country. We said, you know, you had this lifestyle where you sustained yourself, you were hunters, gatherers, or whatever you were doing. We're not going to let you do that anymore. We're going to confine you into a very small area. We're not going to let you do any of the things that you did before to uh, make a living. We are going to shut down any kind of business efforts that you want on the Indian reservation. We're going to control that very tightly, but don't worry. We're going to give you free health care. We're going to give you a stipend. We're going to give you welfare. We're going to contain you. That reservation system that our government has been doing to the Indians for over 100 years. That is what they're now bringing to us with sustainable development. It's the UN agenda for sustainability. And we look at this article from Reuters, they even put down here, sustainable solution, quote unquote. They say champions of the plan portrayed a more automated future in a poster that was bigger than a soccer field. And they asked, what would you do if your income was secure? They also had marched robots down the streets of Zurich and handed out free 10 franc notes. There you go. Don't worry, the robots are coming, the robots are gonna take your job, but don't worry, they're gonna hand you out money. You really think so? You really think so? As we've said many times, when you look at what's on the horizon, if we don't get control of AI, of automation, of this UN Agenda 21, it's an agenda that comes from the UN. They called it Agenda 21. It was the agenda for the 21st century. Now the new name, they renamed it because they've got a more specific time frame. At first it was Agenda 21. Ah, sometime in the 21st century we're going to do it. Now it's the 2030 UN Agenda for Sustainable Development. So when these people say, is this a sustainable solution? Yeah, that's right. They think it is. They're going to put you in a welfare state. They're going to put you in a reservation where you can't do anything, where you become completely dependent upon them and even more passive because they're going to have the robots hand you the money. You're not going to have a job. You're not going to have possibility to do anything else. And when I look at this, I look at Switzerland having the good sense to reject this, but surprisingly, uh, it wasn't 100% rejection as you would think. Uh, you still have situations as, as Swiss have maintained their independence from the EU. And I thought, you know, what does it take to become a Swiss citizen? You know, because we have Hillary lecturing us on uh, how we need to open up our borders and Barack Obama and everything. Are, are the Swiss um, open? No, they're not. They don't have open borders. L listen to what it takes to become a Swiss citizen. Children born in Switzerland from non-Swiss parents do not automatically become Swiss. They don't have anchor babies in Switzerland. And you know what? We don't have them in our constitution either. We need to call that bluff. And that's something that Donald Trump did early on. We need to call the bluff of anchor babyism. Okay, if you want to call it that way. Uh, but anyway, they say to become a naturalized citizen, you need to have resided in Switzerland for at least 12 years, three of which occurred within the previous five years prior to your request for citizenship. And... They, you have to provide them with references. You have to go before local boards, okay? You have to go to the municipality where you reside. Then from there, it'll be sent to another municipality. And what they're going to do is they're going to look to see if you've been integrated into the Swiss community. Are you accustomed to the Swiss way of life, to Swiss practices? Do you comply with the Swiss legal system? Now, that would be a big no if you marched across the border and started demanding that people take care of you. I think they would say, no, I don't think <laughs> that, they, that they understand the Swiss and comply with the Swiss legal system. And you have to be in no way uh, compromising the internal or external security of Switzerland. Okay, And there's a story from a 
Swiss publication, The Local, where they talk about how an expat was denied Swiss citizenship after 39 years. This guy is an American. He's from California, interestingly enough. He's lived in Switzerland since 1975. He taught at a university. And then when he retired, they said he applied for citizenship and they said, no, we don't think you know enough about the region. We don't think you're integrated enough into the region. And when we come back, we're going to tell you the really weird stuff in Switzerland. Stay with us. Clean. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. We we're just talking in the last segment about the wisdom of the Swiss in terms of rejecting Bernie economics and Hillary socialism, saying we're not going to guarantee $31,000 a year for every citizen over the age of 18. That's $16 an hour if they're working, but they were going to give that to everybody whether they worked or not. That was a proposal. They resoundingly rejected that, just as they've rejected participation in the EU, uh, as well as not turning over their currency to the European Union. They also are not opening up their borders because they understand it will destroy their country if they bring people in who have absolutely no respect for their legal system or their culture. I mean, we stop and look at this. Would it be reasonable for us to have uh, the Chinese just come in in whatever massive numbers they want so that they can, uh, during the time of Mao, so they could have the uh, cultural revolution in our country as well? I mean, at what point do open borders and uncontrolled immigration become an invasion? At what point do we have any control over that? If we're going to say that open borders are the the greatest goal that we can have, and we're going to play you a clip in just a moment from Hillary Clinton saying just that very thing. She wants to, within the first 100 days, make everybody legal that are here illegally. Her greatest goal is to open up our borders to everyone in the world to come here without any restriction. If we were to do that, then what would keep our country from turning into communist China, for example, during the Cultural Revolution? Mao could have done that. No, it absolutely makes no sense. And yet, there is something rotten in the state of Switzerland. Not just Denmark, but uh, for Switzerland. When I was looking this story up about uh, the referendum that they had, I saw this ceremony that they had on June 1st, opening up the deepest, longest railroad tunnel in the world at Goddard Base, the Goddard Base Tunnel. Truly bizarre. And if you're looking at this, and we're probably going to have, I'm sure somebody will want to do a report on this tomorrow. It's not really the sort of thing I like to focus on. But the pictures on this thing are unbelievably bizarre. Now, the picture that's up there right now is like this uh, angel, topless uh, angel girl with a giant baby head and feathered wings and people bowing down, floating in midair, okay, as part of this, people bowing down to it in orange jumpsuits. And there you can see the people doing that. There's a video of it right there. Incredibly bizarre. This looks like something, for those of you listening on the radio, Remember Terry Gilliam's Brazil? Okay, it looks like those kind of nightmare scenarios, but it also has a lot of satanic imagery in it. It also has a lot of uh, imagery of people in these orange jumpsuits that look like they're prisoners or in a trance that they're controlled. They have this expression on their faces. They march real slowly and mechanically down this thing. Understand, too, I think that there is a satanic element to it. As uh, Drudge has a, a story up about the, uh, there you can see the people marching with this satanic, uh, kind of this trance-like robotic march that they've got going on. Everything about this was creepy, bizarre, over-sexualized with satanic images. It's unbelievable. And when we look at the symbolism that they use, when they do this on 616 with 600 actors, musicians, etc., okay, and they've got symbolism here, they've got, like, besides these zombies and orange jumpsuits, uh, they've also got simulated bestiality, Satanism. They got people marching around in Baphomet characters. Uh, one of the people on Twitter says, um, the opening ceremony show for the new Goddard Tunnel is embarrassing. As a Swiss citizen, I apologize. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. Understand that they put a lot of, uh, put a lot of importance on these sixes, the 666. That's what they're doing in LA, the Satanists there. Say they're going to put a pentagram over L.A. and they're going to do it on June the 6th to, and 2016. That's where they get their three sixes. So it means something to them, folks. And you got to understand, uh, question what these people are really into. This is something that was established by the elitists. They had the 
prime ministers and presidents from uh, Germany, France, and Italy there in attendance. A lot of high officials, a lot of EU officials, and it's very disturbing to watch that. Really bizarre. I want to talk now about what's happening with our open borders. And, of course, we've got President Obama who cannot bring people in this country quickly enough. So he doesn't want to vet them at all. I think uh, maybe President O is going to become, maybe we should start calling him patient zero. Because now we're get, bringing in tuberculosis in large numbers. This is a story that was up on uh, the Drudge Report today. More than one-third of refugees, well, actually, this is a, a story from June the 2nd. The one that was up today on Drudge Report was two workers in Minnesota coming down with tuberculosis. Now, these are American workers coming down with tuberculosis, but just a few days ago, we saw this coming out of Vermont. The Vermont Watchdog published data from the Vermont Department of Health that shows that more than one-third of refugees resettled in Vermont test positive for tuberculosis. About 35% of them tested positive. Now, you know, you may, as an American, as a first-world person, you may not really think about this too much. You probably don't think about tuberculosis, but it's a big issue in other parts of the world. And it's going to become a big issue in America if we don't screen people for anything. We don't screen them for being terrorists or criminals. We don't screen them for having the ability to support themselves or the skills to find a job. We just bring them in and see what happens because that's what Obama and Hillary Clinton are about. I wanna play for you this clip where she gave a speech campaigning in California. What she says is the true goal, the center, the center of her presidential campaign is this, Hillary says. Immigration is at the center of this presidential campaign. In my first 100 days, I will introduce legislation for comprehensive immigration. Yeah. There you go. See, the center of her campaign is immigration. And she is going to legalize everybody who has come here flaunting our laws, flaunting our culture, demanding largesse from you, the American taxpayer. And I want to, I want you to hear, she, she has these, um, it's not a um, press conference. She doesn't do press conferences, okay? This is a campaign dog and pony show where she's got a lot of people in there who are dreamers, you know, like the people that have been bashing uh, Donald Trump supporters at these um, Trump rallies, burning cars, attacking the police, okay? Here's Though this, this girl here is not a violent person, but she thinks that she's entitled to have you pay for her college education. Here's somebody from South Korea. This is what she has to say. Others, like Clara Kim, here illegally from South Korea, goes to Azusa Pacific. And she was able to get help with tuition despite her legal status. I was able to get scholarships and grants through DACA. DACA and oh, DAPA yeah. are government programs which, among other things, allow and Hillary, children let's, let's and... stop it right there. And Hillary is just sitting right next to her, nodding. Oh, yes, that's so wonderful. You're getting a full scholarship. An undocumented immigrant, they report, from South Korea. In other words, an illegal alien from South Korea is going to Azusa Pacifica College. College, uh, Azusa Pacific College. I looked it up. What is the tuition at that college? Tuition is $35,500 a year. That's just tuition. Now, if you look it up on Azusa, they say, well, you want to take a look at if you include room and board and the service fee, plan on spending $44,000 per year. Okay? $44,000 a year. Now, that means that if she just got tuition because of the DACA program that Hillary Clinton is so excited about, that means that over four years, this girl who came here from South Korea is going to get $142,000 from U.S. taxpayers. $142,000. And if she gets the rest of the stuff, a meal plan and a board at the college, then she's going to get $177,000 from us. Can we afford to do that? How many college students are there in South Korea? Well, it turns out there's about 3.3 uh, million college graduates there, okay? Uh, so we could wind up spending just for the South Korean students who want to go to college in America for free and have you pay for it. That could be about $637 billion per year. Not a problem, right? No problem. See, Hillary and Bernie want free college for everybody. But everybody means everybody, that means anyone who wants to come into this country is a dreamer, and they get free college tuition. I, it was interesting. I went back and thought, what does college cost in South Korea? I found this article from five years ago. South Korean students are balking at the high cost of college. They think they're paying too much because 
The average tuition at a private university there in South Korea is $7,000. So they look at that and they say, well, you know, it's going to cost me $7,000 to go to college here in South Korea. Or I can go to the United States where the tuition has been inflating and is now $35,000, five times what it is in South Korea. I could go there, though, even though it's five times the cost, and the American taxpayer will pay for it. Or the Federal Reserve will print money and borrow money uh, so that uh, they can put it on our children. Okay? But they get it for free. See? That's the, the calculation that they're making. It makes perfectly good sense to them. And that's what is ultimately behind this. This is a planned takedown of our nation. And it made me absolutely furious to watch the libertarians debating about this and saying, well, we can have open borders and the welfare state because the illegals don't get any benefits. Oh, really? How detached from reality can you